Welcome to the first ever episode of Learn Something New. This channel is dedicated to exploring different topics, learning new and exciting things as we go. Thank you for stopping by, and we hope to have you stick around for more videos. There are many mixed opinions about skydiving. Some people love to go and hurl themselves out of planes, allowing the thrill of plummeting toward the earth, only to be saved by a piece of cloth and some strings, and others prefer to keep both their feet firmly planted on the ground, stating that they will only ever jump out of a plane if it is on fire. Both of these sides make valid points, but skydiving is still widely regarded as one of the most popular bucket list activities. But where did skydiving come from? How did it start? And is it really that dangerous? We'll find out all this and more as we learn something new. The earliest recorded point in history of people deciding to jump off high things and try and survive is in ancient China. There are many stories of people using widespread, conical-shaped, lightweight objects of fabric to slow their descent from high places. Although many of these take the shape of mythological stories rather than concrete fact, it does show that the ancient civilization was aware they could slow down an object falling using air resistance, even if it was never actually put into practice. Next, we move to the famous Leonardo da Vinci, who actually designed a parachute in the late 1400s. It was a pyramid, 12 meters long on each side, and made of sticks covered with cloth. It looks like it wouldn't work in the slightest at first glance, but a British skydiver named Adrian Nicholas actually created it and used it in July of 2000. The descent was so slow and smooth that the two people parachuting beside him actually descended faster with their modern parachutes. André Jacques Garnerin made a parachute design in 1797 after jumping out of a hot air balloon. And in 1919, a stuntman named Leslie Irving was the first to have recorded a premeditated freefall jump from a plane that was not military related, although it proved the usefulness of the Type A parachute at the time. The first competitive jumps were in the 1930s, and skydiving became a national sport in the United States in 1952. On October 14, 2012, Felix Baumgartner broke the world record for the highest freefall jump as part of the Red Bull Stratos project. Falling from just under 39 kilometers, he broke the sound barrier as he fell going at speeds up to 843 miles per hour. It's a very interesting story that could probably be its own episode, and I would highly recommend watching the video taken of it. A lot of the history behind skydiving involves parachuting and base jumping. But there is a difference between those and actual skydiving. Mainly, skydiving involves time spent in freefall with nothing to slow you down. Meanwhile, parachuting and base jumping operate with the parachute opening at the start of the jump, increasing the overall time spent in the air. So what are modern parachutes made of? A parachute needs to have several properties in order to slow the descent of the user to safe speeds. It needs to have strength, tear resistance, elasticity, and permeability. Most parachutes, therefore, are made up of what's called ripstop nylon, which is essentially an extra thick thread threaded at regular intervals creating a very strong fabric that is not only hard to tear, but will keep any small tears from spreading. Every parachute pack has a main parachute and a reserve parachute. It is extremely rare that there is a problem with the main parachute in the main part of the pack. However, if there is a problem with the main parachute, modern parachutes are equipped with the reserve parachute in a smaller compartment on the top section of the pack that can easily be immediately deployed after the release of the defective main chute. So how safe does this make skydiving? In 2018, the United States Parachuting Association recorded that there were 13 deaths throughout the 3.3 million jumps performed that year. And that's just for solo skydivers. With tandem skydivers, where you are attached to an instructor who does all the work while you just enjoy the ride, the fatality rate is even lower, with only one death per 500,000 jumps throughout the last decade. This has gotten much safer than when records first started being kept in the 1960s and 70s. Throughout the 70s, there were, on average, 42.5 deaths per year. Now you're more likely to get struck by lightning than die from a skydiving accident. The average price to go skydiving is $300 per person, but this number can vary greatly depending on the location you're jumping from, and for many, the location is important. It is recommended to choose a location that is part of the USPA, 
And a lot of people also say that the geographical location is very important, especially if you're planning on getting the entire experience on video. A more scenic location makes it turn out better, as well as enhancing the experience in the moment, especially since the majority of the time in the air will be spent gliding. One of the first things you do once you get to the drop zone center is sign the papers. Although skydiving is statistically safe, things can go wrong. So you spend a lot of time signing papers saying that you want to skydive, and nobody will sue the center if you get injured or die. After you finish signing the documents, you move to the classroom. Here in the classroom, you are informed more about the experience of skydiving and are told about the safety procedures in exiting the plane at 10,000 feet and how to land. Then you are paired up with your tandem instructor, they're the ones who will be strapped to your back until you've landed safely back on the ground. You then get fitted for your harness and other safety gear before moving to a waiting room. Sometimes people end up waiting for a while until the weather becomes ideal for jumping conditions in order to make sure that there are no complications during the jump. Once you've been given the all clear, you and everyone else jumping with you will board the plane and it's a 10 to 20 minute flight until you're at anywhere from 10,000 to 13,500 feet. Your instructor keeps you talking and distracted so you don't get too nervous as the doors are preparing to open. Once you reach jumping altitude, the plane will level off and the doors slide open. The sound of the wind entering the plane can be very loud and the interior gets a lot colder. You make your way towards the door with your tandem instructor attached to you, giving you constant encouragement along the way to make the jump. The instructor counts down and you take a deep breath as you fall out of the plane. You'll free fall for up to 60 seconds, reaching up to 120 miles per hour as you hurtle towards the earth. Some people during free fall experience such a sensory overload that they have to remind themselves to breathe, but actually breathing is not difficult even at that speed. Your instructor lets you know that they are about to open the parachute and you feel a strong jolt. The next 5 to 8 minutes are going to be spent looking at the scenery that you chose. As you approach the drop zone, you bring your knees up to your chest and your instructor helps you touch down safely. Skydiving has been shown to increase the amount of serotonin and dopamine in your brain, which can leave you feeling happier and more focused. An increase in serotonin can also lead to better sleep. Although, if you are suffering from insomnia, there are probably other treatments you should try first before jumping out of the plane. People who have tried skydiving also report an increased level of confidence in their lives, allowing them to pursue things they might not have done otherwise. Would you want to go skydiving? Have you ever been skydiving? And what did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments section below. Once again, thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like and subscribe.